Hello everybody, my name is David Fisher and I'm the founder of Innovalog, the company that offers the JMWE and the JMCF apps for Jira. Today I'm going to show you how you can use JMWE to build better workflows and also to easily automate them. JMWE offers dozens of point and click workflow conditions, validators and post functions and provides additional flexibility through simple scripting. But unlike with other apps, you don't have to choose between the simplicity of point and click and the power of scripting. And this is something I will show you later in this demo. But before we start, let me point out that everything you will see today is on Jira Cloud. But JMWE offers the same features and even more to Jira Server and Jira Data Center's users. The first thing I'm going to show you is workflow conditions. Workflow conditions in Jira control whether a transition should be visible to the user. Now, Jira offers a few built-in conditions, but you're likely to need more. For that, you can use JMWE's point-and-click conditions, or you can even build your own using simple scripting. Let's have a look at a common requirement. Imagine you have epics, and each epic contains multiple stories. And now, you need to make sure that an epic cannot be closed until all its stories are closed. To achieve this, we're going to be adding a condition to our closed transition. Let's start by editing our workflow. This is a Kanban workflow, but the same would apply to a Scrum workflow. Now let's find our done transition and add a condition. Let's click on add condition and select the linked issues status condition. Let's click on add and configure it. The first thing you will need to configure is the issue link type. Here you will be selecting the is epic of link type. That means that the issue on which the condition will run who is the epic of the stories that need to be checked. And now let's select the done status, which is the status in which the linked issues must be for the transition to be enabled. Let's add our condition to our workflow. And of course, let's not forget to publish our workflow. Now, let's go create a new epic. Let's type our epic summary and epic name and create it. And of course, now let's navigate to it. And the first thing we'll want to do is add issues in that epic. Let's create a story, my first story, and create it. Now we only have one story, which will be enough for this example. If you want to close the epic right now, you should not be able to, because the my first story story is still open. And if we click on our transition button, you'll notice that there is no transition to the done status. Let's now move on to workflow validators. Workflow validators verify that the information that the user inputs on a transition screen is valid. Uh, a very common scenario is making a field mandatory during a certain transition. For that, you can use the built-in field required validator, but what if you want to make a field mandatory, but only for certain issue types, for example, but it could be for certain priorities or whatnot. For that, you cannot use the built-in field required validator. You will need instead JMWE's version of that validator, which supports what we call conditional validation. Let's go back to our workflow and edit it. And let's say that during the selected for development transition, you want to enforce a due date, but only for bugs. So let's go to our selected for development transition. 
go to the validators tab and add a new validator. Here we're going to select the field required validator JMWE app, which is different from the standard field required validator shipped with Jira. Let's add this validator, choose our due date field, enter an error message, and now let's add a conditional validation that specifies that this validation only applies to bugs. For that, we're going to use our help system and we're going to select the issue type field and what we want is make sure that the issue type is bug and as you can see you can click directly on the help system to insert the expression in the the editor and in our case we want to test the issue type name against bug which is exactly what was inserted so let's add this validator again publish our workflow and now let's go back to our story our story is currently in the backlog status and we want to move it to the selected for development status and here we have our transition screen with the due date. We're not going to provide a due date and we're going to click select it for development and it works. Why? Because this is not a bug. This is a story. Now let's go back to our epic and add an other issue to that epic, but this time it will be a bug. Let's go to our bug and try to transition it to the selected for development status. And let's not enter a due date and click on selected for development. At that point, the error message appears saying that the due date is required for bugs. If we enter a due date and click again on selected for development, this time the transition will go through. As you can see, we were able to add a fairly sophisticated validator by writing, actually not even typing, but just clicking on an example script that was automatically inserted in our validator. You now start seeing the power of the combination of a point and click validator in this case, but it will also apply to conditions and post functions with limited scripting. You didn't have to write tens of lines of code, but you still got the flexibility. Let's now move on to workflow post functions, which are the most common type of workflow extensions you will, you will be using when, when configuring workflows. But before we start, let's address the elephant in the room here. As you probably know, Atlassian recently acquired CodeBarrow and its automation for Jira app. And since then, they have integrated the functionality of automation for Jira into Jira Cloud. Jira Automation, as it is now called, doesn't integrate with workflows. Instead, it allows you to define automation rules that are triggered by specific actions, such as transitioning an issue. In that sense, they can be considered as similar to workflow post functions, since they run during a transition or right after. And by the way, if you work only on next-gen projects, our automation rules actually replace post functions which don't exist in next-gen workflows. But for regular projects, you can also define automation rules at the project level, or you can define automation rules that will apply to multiple projects or even across all projects, and they're called global rules. As a Jira administrator, you're likely to define most of your rules at a multi-project level or even at a global level so that you can enforce the same processes across projects without needing to replicate all the rules 
from one project to the other and then maintain them all separately afterwards. However, unless you have a Jira premium subscription, you're limited to 500 multi-project or global automation rule executions per month. What that means is if you have rules that are triggered by a transition, every transition will count towards that limit, which means you're going to be reaching that limit within hours, if not minutes on any reasonably sized Jira instance. And after that, your automation rules will simply stop working and your processes will be broken. In contrast, there is no limit to the number of JMWE post functions you can run on your Jira instance. There is no premium versus standard edition of JMWE. But what are these JMWE post functions anyway? You have probably used the standard Jira post functions already in your workflows and you notice that there are a few, but you really can't do much with them. What JMWE does is add a lot of post functions. The list is too long to enumerate here. So I, I actually encourage you to visit our website to find out the whole list. Instead, let's start with an example. Imagine that whenever you create a new story, you want to automatically create a testing subtask for that story instead of having to create it manually every time and easily forget it. Again, let's go to our workflow, edit our workflow, but this time you, we are going to go to the in, what is called the initial transition. Let's go to the diagram view, which is easier. And here, let's select the create transition. As you will notice, the create tra transition doesn't have conditions, unfortunately, but it still supports validators and post functions. Let's go to our post functions and add a new post function that will create the subtask whenever a new story is created. For that, we will be using the create issues post function from JMWE. Let's add it and configure it. We will first need to define where the new issue needs to be created here because it's uh, going to be a subtask. It has to be in the same project as the current issue. The issue type we're going to create is a subtask. And because it's a subtask, you also need to specify what the parent issue is. In our case, we will be specifying the current issue, which is the new story being created. We could also add a link to that new issue between the current issue and the, the issue being created. In our case, we don't need that. You can also specify the value of fields in that new issue. Here, a subtask. In our case, we're just going to supply a summary. And the summary will be here. This is uh, the QA subtask for and insert the summary of our main story. We could set additional fields, and, but we're not going to do that here. We could also do a lot of things that to, to further fill in our new issue. At this point, we only need to create a new subtask. Let's again publish our draft. Let's now create our new story. We select story here, type our summary, my new story, and let's hit create. Now, as you can see, a new issue was created, which is my story. Let's go to it. As you can see, a new subtask was automatically created. And the summary is, this is the QA subtask for my new story. If you'd like to find out more, please visit innovalog.com for more information about JMWE and our other products. Thank you very much.